Hey, you know what it is? Hit that like and subscribe. Let me know where you're all from. Let's jump right back into it. Let's keep these news rolling. So, you know, he's Suge Knight. He flips the stance on Tupac in the murder in the new interview. You know, justice that is served. The embattled Death Row Records co-founder spoke from jail and is no longer defending Keith D. You know, Compton native Suge Knight is no longer defending Keith D, the former gang member accused of involvement in Tupac Shakur's 1996 fatal shooting. The Death Row Records co-founder flipped his stance regarding Tupac's murder in the latest episode on his collect call. And Knight, who is currently serving a 20-year sentence for voluntary manslaughter, now insists that justice is being served for one of hip-hop's greatest icons. It's been a long time since I was able to talk freely about Pac because we were so close, he said. And the thing is, Pac is finally getting justice, and justice for Pac is not so much somebody getting punished or going to prison. It's the fact that if he was around Pac and your hand, you had your hands into trying to destroy him and we got the receipts, it's a problem. Knight continued, even revealing his former friend's motive for playing a part in ending Tupac's life. I said this from day one. When we first started talking about it, jealousy is worse than hate. And as I was saying earlier about jealousy, you know, there's a lot of people that are jealous that you may have the good things going on in your life. That you may have like, you know, the jewelry or the women or the, the money. You know, people get jealous of these things and they may not tell you that they're jealous and they may not say they're uh, jealous and they're not. But uh, deep down inside, they may really be having some hidden intentions against you. And, you know, they may be planning something or plotting. And those are, those are things you've got to look out for nowadays because a lot of people are doing that. And so when your name starts ringing, people get jealous of you, you know. And if a person hates you, they can be across the street and they can see you. They can see you, you know. And so the embattled uh, mogul is singing a different tune from what he said in October to TMZ when he told the tabloid that he didn't want to see Keith D arrested. I wouldn't wish prison on my worst enemy. Now let's get one thing straight. First and foremost, me and Keith played on the same Pop Warner football team. And whatever the circumstances, if he had an involvement with anything, I wouldn't wish somebody going to prison on my worst enemy, he previously said. But Suge Knight added that Keith D's nephew, Orlando Anderson, deceased in 1998, was not the shooter, contrary to what the investigations recently determined now it wasn't orlando that's all i have to say about that he commented back in october but the begging the uh begging the question if that were true why would he now speak of tupac shakur finally getting justice if it was not indeed anderson and his uncle that carried out the fatal drive-by shooting on the legendary rapper in 1996 and that's the big question that everybody's curious about right now is why is that going on and why would he, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, switch sides like that? But there's a reason for it because of what's going on. And so, you know, Suge Knight has shared that he believes that his late death row artist, Tupac, is finally getting that justice for his murder more than 30 years ago. And as I was saying, it's in his uh, latest episode. He talks about it and he's saying it's been a long time since I was able to talk really about Pac because we were so close, you know, he said in the episode. And the thing is, Pac is finally getting justice, and justice for Pac is this, not so much of somebody getting punished or going to prison, as I was saying earlier, but it's that you had your hands into just trying to destroy that guy. And he, you know, he was just trying to do good for his community and the people around, and he was trying to make an earning and a legitimate living but you know people hate and get jealous and they plot against you it set things up and so you know like as he was continuing how jealousy destroys a jealous person you're on their mind every time they're awake every time you think of of them or you think of anything they're in your head and so they want to destroy you get rid of you he concluded and so Back in October, TMZ spoke with the Death Row Records co-founder over the phone to get his thoughts on the recent development in Pac's long-running homicide investigation. And remember, at the time, Keep D had been charged with murder with the use of a deadly weapon with the intent to promote further or assist a criminal gang, marking the first time charges have been made in the 27-year-old uh, case. So, well, surprise, number one, Suge said while reacting to the news, because I don't think Keith D would ever get arrested, nor do I want to see him get arrested. Let's get one thing straight. You know, first and foremost, he was saying that him and Keith played on the Pop Warner football team. And, you know, whatever the circumstances, he didn't have involvement with anything. And so, you know, he didn't wish on go for anybody to go to prison, even on his worst enemies. But 
you know, Knight, who is currently behind the, the bar, is serving a 28-year sentence for the voluntary manslaughter, you know, was contrary to the popular belief that there were only two people in the car. Pac's not going to tell the story. I ain't going to tell the story, said the former record executive. But who was sat next to Tupac and also wounded during the fatal drive-by shooting? You know, but I can tell you this. I never had nothing bad to say about Orlando because he wasn't the shooter. It wasn't Anderson. So that's all I got to say about that part. And so now there's like really big speculation on what's going on with all that. But, you know, those that's some recent news right there. And then like another thing about it is another question is whether it should matter when an alleged victim learned about infringement. You know, some uh, like Warner Chapel argue a discovery rule would be harmful to the industry because the value of works could be distorted by uncertainty which could even chill the creation of collaborative works given the potential for allegations of slights, real or imagined, decades in the future. And just like any property owner, you want to have confidence in what it is you, you own and certainly over how it will be treated. Now, copyright and entertainment attorney Alan uh, Sakharov of Kinsella Holly Iser Kump uh, Steinpasser uh, LLP said that Lipschi noted that the exum, um, that there's no right without a remedy. And so Sakhtov uh, encountered and countered that parties like Master T can still claim damages from the most recent three years of ongoing infringement. And it's unfortunate, someone who was wronged can't necessarily reach into the heyday of their work, he said. But for the rule to be made workable, there have to be winners and there has to be losers. So letting plaintiffs simply say, I didn't know, and imposing a high bar for defendants to show they should have and would encourage lawsuits that would be questionable or friv uh, frivolous. Uh, copyright and entertainment attorney E. Scott Johnson of Baker, Donson, uh, Behrman, Cal Caldwell, and Berkowitz uh, PC said that there has to be some real uh, conscious um, effort to weed out cases that don't meet the standard, you know, Johnson said. And then we got that middle ground between it all because the Supreme Court has conspicuously avoided taking a stance on this discovery rule in copyright cases. A footnote in Justice Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg's 2014 majority opinion in Petrella v. MGM acknowledged that some circuits have adopted it and said we have not passed on the question. She went on to rule that uh, here to an el alleged uh, rights uh, holder of 1980, Robert De Niro, boxing movie Raging Bull could sue for an infringement covering the three years preceding the suit. And so despite the explicit non-stance, the opinion has been interpreted by courts to support both answers for the discovery rule question, and Lipschi said he believes the justices will now come down with a middle ground. And so they clearly want to get rid of this overhang from the Raging Bull's case, but there's something in it for everyone. They're going to have to come up with an opinion that settles the circuit split and causes there to be a uniform approach to the way they handle cases. And so he said, you know, one path could require plaintiffs to put up or shut up earlier in the lawsuit to explain the lack of awareness. Another possible outlet for plaintiffs absent a discovery rule could be fraud, and the Supreme Court has held that fraudulent concealment and then can override a statute of limitations according to a friend of the court brief in Nelly's case by law professor Tyler T. Ochoa of Santa Clara University. And, you know, Master T's complaint made for a sympathetic case on the discovery rule, Goal said, but the statute of limitations put some responsibility on the plaintiff. And so that's all some recent news right there, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hit that like and subscribe, and we'll keep it rolling.